Hi, and welcome to this training video on how to create your first pneumatic circuit. Let's start by going to the pneumatic section of our library. And from here you will see at the bottom the most commonly used component in pneumatic. Obviously you can browse that category to find much more component and subcategories. So let's start by dragging a double acting pneumatic cylinder. And we'll need to take a directional valve 5-2 with two pneumatic pilots. To put the components on your sheet, you simply click on the library, you keep your finger on the button, left button of your mouse, and you simply drag it where you want on your schematic, then you let go the mouse button to drop it. Okay? If you want to erase a component, you can press delete or right click and then delete. To make the connections between these two components, the red dots are identification of a connection port. So to make the connection, you position your cursor on that red circle. And as you can see, your cursor will change as a target sign. Once you have the target sign, you can left click on that sign, let go of the mouse button, and then click again on the other port. You can click here, let go, and then click. If you want to change the path of your line, you can select that line and then go on any of the handles that you see here to actually move the line the way you want. Okay. Now we'll need to have pressure source and exhaust to control that cylinder. So let's go back in the library. We have two different models, the circle or the triangle. So I'll take the circle for this purpose, so simply drag it on the circuit. As you can see, I have made a connection by simply putting the two red dots on top of each other. So if I take the exhaust, you see I'm going to put the two connections together. If I pull this away, you see I have two red dots, and then you just move it like that. It will automatically turn black, meaning it's connected. And then to put another exhaust on the other side, there's two choices. I can copy it or bring one from the library again. If you decide to make a copy of this one, there's three different ways that you can do that. Right click, copy, and right click, paste. Okay, that's one way. Obviously, Automation Studio is a Windows-based application, so the keyboard short key also works. So Control C and Control V. And when you do the Control V, it will paste wherever you put your cursor. So if I put up here, Control V. Down here, Control V. Okay, so sometimes when you have a, a drawing, when I copy one part from a specific area of your schematic, you can bring it wherever you want by just pasting where your mouse will be pointing. And again, I will put the two dot one over the other. Please note that if you pull on a component that is connected, you will automatically generate a line between the components. In Automation Studio, once you've connected component together, they will remain connected. So if I move this one away, you see it stays connected. If you want to disconnect the component for any reason, you can hold down the Shift button while you move it, and this will automatically disconnect each component. And to connect them back, you just put the two red dots over each other, and you see now they're reconnected. So to control this, pneumatic cylinder, I will need two three two-way valve on each side to pilot my valve. So I'm going to go into the directional valve and take a three two push button. I'm going to take again a pressure source and an exhaust. And then I'm going to cut I'm going to connect that I need the exact same valve on my other side. So what you can do, you can select all these components, right click on it, and do a group. Now if you move this, it will remain as a group, one item. So if you hold down the control button of your keyboard and drag it, you will automatically make a copy here. You see my cursor is a small plus, meaning it will be copied. And then I can simply do the connections. These two lines are pilot line. So you can right click on this line, 
line function and put them as a pilot. Same thing here, line function, pilot. Then if you start your simulation, you should be able to control that cylinder with the two push button here. If you push here, cylinder extend, retract, extend, retract. We also have, if you right click on the cylinder, an animation of a cutaway view of the cylinder. So now that we've done this simulation, let's try to make a schematic which will automate that cylinder extending and retracting. So I will erase this part and this part of my drawing. Now I will need to insert on my drawing two 3 2 way valve with roller on them that will get mechanically triggered by the cylinder. So I'm going to go into my directional valve. I'll take a 3 2 with a roller. I'm going to edit, rotate my valve like this. And the mechanical contact in Automation Studio, let me just bring that down a bit, are these diamond shaped signs. So I have one here, one here, and one here. So in order for these to be triggered, I need to put those two diamonds one on top of each other, like this. Now when the cylinder will retract, it will automatically send the signal. I need to take again a pressure source and an exhaust. So I'll take a pressure source, which I will turn 90 degree, and my exhaust, do the same thing turn it 90 degree, place it there. I need to duplicate this valve again at the end of the stroke of my cylinder. So I'm going to select these three items, group them, and hold down the control key of the keyboard. I will simply drag it to position at the end of the stroke of my cylinder, which is not always obvious to know exactly where it will be. So to make sure to place that at the right location, you can double click on the cylinder. You go into the data sheet. In this data sheet, you can change all parameters of your cylinder. Piston diameter, rod diameter, stroke length, angle, weight, everything is configurable to have a more accurate simulation that may reflect the equipment that you have at school. Let's put an inclination, uh, an extension, sorry, of 100%. Then you see I was a bit off in my position. So I can take it and just move it to the exact position. To zoom in and zoom out, by the way, I'm actually holding down the control key of my keyboard and rolling my mouse. And this will zoom in where you're pointing your cursor also. Okay. And to zoom all, you can just right click, zoom all components. I'm going to put back my cylinder at the initial position, double click on it. I'll put here extension zero. And I will retract. So I can connect now my circuit. So once it's going to trigger this valve, I want my cylinder to extend. Again, this is a pilot line. And when this one gets triggered, I want the cylinder to retract. Again, pilot line. Let's start the simulation. And now we have our automated system. Now if I want to use two pneumatic cylinders, I'm going to take and I'm going to show you a different way of actually using the mechanical contact, okay? So I'm going to erase these two pilot lines. I'm going to move my drawing a bit to the left. To pan your document, you hold the space bar of your keyboard, and you click, and then you just move. This will pan your document. Let's move it here. And I'm going to duplicate this here. I select all, hold down the control key, and just Simply drag it like that. 
But now instead of putting my roller directly on my cylinder, I will show you a different way of doing it. So I'm going to erase this valve. I'm going to bring this one down here, which I will rotate. And once it's rotate, I'm going to duplicate it to have another one the same way. But I'm going to use this time in my sensor a sensor reference. This will actually send a signal to the cam that will trigger that roller. So once I drop this, it's going to ask for a name. Let's put an alias of A0. And I'm going to bring another one at the end of the stroke of my cylinder, which I will need to place. So I'm going to put A1 here. And like we did before, I'm going to double click on that cylinder to extend 100%. And position this exactly on it, my cylinder to zero now. Zero. And I'm going to use now mechanical contact like this, which I will rotate 90 degree. And this one here will receive a signal as soon as this one is triggered. So in order to link this one to A0, you double click on it. You go into the variable assignment section where you will sort by A as a filter. And you see my A0 is here. Click twice. The link is made. You see the question mark just changed to A0. And you see how the hyperlinks is also there. I'm going to take another cam, which I will rotate again 90 degree. And this one, I'll link it to A1. Click twice on it. Here, it's important to put the A here because you see if I remove this, you see all the variables in the software, which there's many of them. So by filtering A, you will limit to just the one that starts by A. So A1, and you see now the link is made. So now let's connect all this circuit together and make it like a A plus, B plus, A minus, B minus. So when this one triggers that valve, I want cylinder B to extend. So I'm going to come here and connect this here. You see, each time I click the mouse, I can make a turn like that in my line. Right click, this is a pilot line. When this one will trigger A1, I want my first cylinder to retract. So when A1 will be triggered, I want this cylinder to retract. Right click, line function, pilot. When this one will retract, I want my cylinder B to be retracted. So I'm going to connect this one here. Like this, and this is again a pilot line. And when this one is retracted, I want to extend my A and restart my cycle. So I'm going to bring this one here. Oops, a bit too far, here, here, and here. Let's zoom all components. Oh, I forgot to put this as a pilot, so line function, pilot. Again, you don't have to put pilot, by the way. You can leave it the way it is. It's just that it is mainly, that's a standard of pneumatic drawing. So I'm going to just put some more space on top here. And now if I start this simulation, I should see an automated circuit with two cylinders, A plus, B plus, A minus, B minus. And if you want, you can go in the simulation. We have the step by step and slow motion to make it more easy to see each step of the simulation. And you see, if I wanted, I could have taken these two components, move them here, and take this one, move them here too, just to have less line in my schematic. And if you zoom all, you see exact same thing. And this will not interfere with the simulation at all. You see if I launch simulation one more time, here's my sequence. So this ends the first pneumatic circuit. Thank you for your time, and I invite you to watch the other training videos. Thank you.